Hello guys, welcome back to the 13th part of the series on graph. Hope you all are doing great. Please like the video and for more videos subscribe to the channel. As we post regularly, press the bell icon so that you do not miss out any upcoming videos. So let's get started. Till now we have discussed three of the four applications in the previous video. In this video, we will discuss the last application, strongly connected components. So what is a strongly connected component? Let's see that with an example. Consider we only have single vertex and there is no edge to and from any of these vertices. Now each of these vertices is a strongly connected component because a vertex is strongly connected with itself. Now. If there exists an edge between A and B and A and C, then we can say that A is strongly connected to B and A is strongly connected to C. So we say that if a vertex U is strongly connected to V, then V is also strongly connected to U. Now in the previous graph, there is a relationship between B and C too. Being strongly connected is a transitive property by which logic we can say that B and C is also strongly connected. So the third relationship is if a vertex U is strongly connected to V and V is strongly connected to X, then U is strongly connected to X. The definition of a strongly connected component states that in a directed graph, two vertices U and V are said to be strongly connected if and only if there exists a path from U to V and there exists a path from V to U. There are multiple algorithms to accomplish this task of finding the strongly connected components. First is Kosaraju's algorithm which we will be discussing in this video and then there is Tarjan's algorithm which we will be discussing in the next video. Let us walk through the algorithm. We will use DFS two times. In the first DFS, we push the vertices according to the post order traversal into the stack. We will then reverse all the edges of the graph and perform second DFS on the vertex in stack which gives us tree in the resulting depth for spanning forest corresponding to a strongly connected component. As usual, let's see it with an example. We'll start with this graph and see how each step work. We'll start with our first DFS and as we know, we need a stack to store the graph in post order. We'll start from the zeroth index and look for the vertices reachable from it. The two edges points to one and three. So we reach them and again call our method on them to reach more vertices from it. We will choose one first and see how it turns out. We reach two from one and there exist two edges from it. But as both zero and three are already visited, we can no longer move in depth. So we backtrack. While backtracking, we add our vertex into the stack. We add two into the stack and then one. Now. As from 3 there is no vertex left to be traversed, we add that 2 in the stack. And finally we add 0 into the stack. This completes our first DFS. In the stack we have all the vertices. Now comes the second step, that is reversing the edges. We simply reverse all the edges and finally get this graph. The last step is again applying the DFS on the new graph formed. We start with the first vertex at the top of the stack. In this case 0. We apply DFS on it. We can reach 2 from it and then from 2 we reach 1. Now as there is no more vertex left to be traversed, we stop and these three vertices form a strongly connected component. Now we again pick the next vertex and apply DFS. As we start from 3, we see that both 0 and 2 are already visited and there are no more vertices left. So 3 itself is a strongly connected component. As we saw in the relationship, as both 1 and 2 are already visited, we do not call DFS on them. This gives us finally two strongly connected components in this graph, one with three vertices and other with only one vertex. Let's see how we code it. This is the code which we need in order to find the strongly connected component using Kosaraju's algorithm. Link to the code is in description below. We will start with defining our adjacency matrix for the graph. And when that is done, we call our method strongly connected to find all the subset of the graph which are strongly connected. Inside this method, we will follow the same step which we discussed in the algorithm. 
will first create a stack and apply DFS on the graph inserting all the vertices in post order traversal fashion. Now we transpose all the edges in the graph and then we apply the second DFS on this new graph and find out all the connected components. Now that we know the steps, let's deep dive into each step implementation. For the first step, we initialize our visited array to hold the flag whether the vertex is visited or not, and also a stack to keep all the vertices. We then call our find order method for all the unvisited vertices. Let's see its internal implementation. This method is plain DFS. We mark our vertex visited and then for all its adjacent unvisited edges, we call the function recursively. Once all the adjacent edges are traversed, we add the vertex into the stack. Now comes step 2. We reverse the edges. In this method, we reverse the edges by making all the ones to 0 and their reverse as 2. Now the adjacency matrix has 2 as the flag which shows whether the edge exists or not. You can use a different approach too to achieve the same result. Now comes the final part, applying the second DFS. We again need a visited array so we reinitialize it and loop till the stack is not empty. For every unvisited vertex, we apply DFS on it which also prints all the connected components too. Similar to find order, here also we mark the vertex visited and then call the same method recursively for all the unvisited adjacent edges. The difference here is we are also printing the vertex. By printing this, we have all the vertices which can be reached from a single vertex and thus creates a strongly connected component. This code when run for the same graph give this as a result. We can see that 0, 2 and 1 are one strongly connected component while 3 is a second strongly connected component. Do try to code it by yourself. The time complexity of this algorithm is O of V plus E, where V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges. This brings us to the end of the video. Do try to code it by yourself and let me know your experience in the comments. Would love to hear them. Also for any query or issue, comment below. Next we will see Tarjun's algorithm to find strongly connected components. Don't miss out. Keep learning, keep coding. See you in the next one.